I've been asked a number of times by photographers who are just starting out in macro what aperture they should be using for best results. There isn't a clear-cut answer for that, but I'm gonna try and break it down for you and focus on a few factors that are the most important in my opinion. Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name is Peter and I am a nature photographer and one of my favorite genres is macro. Let's talk about these factors that I was referring to earlier. One of the factors that will dictate what aperture you should be using is the magnification ratio. If you shoot relatively large subjects, around one centimeter or larger, then you will be able to get most of your subject in focus when you use a narrower aperture, let's say between f11 and f14 with a single frame, depending on the angle, of course. You might think that with the increase in magnification, you will need to narrow the aperture down even further, but that's not the case, and I'll tell you why in a mere moment. The second factor is gonna be the focal length. The focal length of your lens will also have an impact or an effect on the most optimal aperture. For example, if you use a wide angle macro lens that has the same magnification ratio as another macro lens, but with a longer focal length, you can get away by using wider apertures because with the increase of focal length, the depth of field will generally decrease. The third and probably one of the most important factors that you need to take into consideration is how your lens performs optically when you shoot at narrower apertures. As a general rule of thumb, the narrower the aperture and the higher the magnification ratio, the higher the diffraction, which will result in decreased sharpness, primarily due to massive loss of light. This is when you have to try and find the most optimum aperture that will still provide you with enough depth of field without compromising image quality and sharpness. The second last factor that's gonna have an effect on what aperture you should be choosing is the minimum focusing distance of your lens. This is the distance between the imaging sensor plane and that also affects the actual working distance. The working distance refers to the distance between the front or front element of the lens and the subject. The shorter this minimum focusing distance, the shallower the depth of field, and you will need to counter that by choosing the optimum aperture, which will normally be a narrower range. The last factor would be whether you wanna take single frames or stack shots. This is also gonna have an effect on what aperture you should choose. If you have total control of your subject or your subject is cooperative enough, you can always open up the aperture and use faster shutter speeds and still let more light in and take a series of shots and stack them in post. Usually the sharpest aperture is when you step down by one full stop from the widest aperture. For example, on the Laowa 25 mm ultra macro lens, which is an f2.8 lens, you will need to step down to f4 and that is gonna yield the sharpest results. If you can't stack or you don't need to stack, then obviously a narrower aperture is gonna be a better option. I have three different macro lenses that I've been using consistently in the field and I wanna show you several images and talk about what apertures I recommend using with them. You will be able to use these f-stop numbers as baseline figures even if you use different lenses that have similar optical characteristics and magnification ratios. All right, let's have a look at those images. Let's start with a few one-to-one -one magnification single shots. This first one was a peacock spider resting on the tip of my finger. This following image was of a colorful moth species. The next two images were of a plant hopper, a high angle single frame and a higher magnification stack shot containing six individual layers where I had the Nisi 58mm close-up lens attached for close to 2 to 1 magnification ratio. Here is another stacked image consisting of 15 photos of a really tiny cobweb spider that I had found in our garden. Here is another single shot of a crane fly and the last four shots were single images as well all taken with the Nisi 58mm and the Nisi 49mm close-up lenses for a maximum magnification of close to 3x. The Lao 190mm 2x ultra macro lens has been one of my go-to lenses since it was released. It has amazing sharpness that you can see in these single images of a ladybug, a drone fly, which is a honeybee mimic, 
and a beautiful male bronzehopper jumping spider. Our next shot is of a relatively large velvet mite. Once again, the detail is exceptional, just like with the following portrait of a honey brown beetle that was resting on a eucalyptus leaf. The next two shots are of a cicada that was on our Swiss cheese plant, and the second slightly cropped image was taken at the maximum magnification and consists of two shots. Our second last subject is a beautiful iridescent cuckoo wasp, and I was super stoked that I managed to stack 7 images in the second frame when it momentarily stopped on the bark of a tree. Our last image is of another colorful plant hopper I captured at our local nature reserve and I blended 4 photos for the final edit. <laughs> The Lao 25mm ultra macro lens, when paired with an excellent mirrorless camera such as the Canon R7, really shines. Even though it doesn't have aperture coupling, using it with a mirrorless body makes it much more user friendly in the field and has excellent image quality up to around 4x magnification. Beyond that, the effects of diffraction become easily noticeable. These first three shots were all taken in our backyard of tiny springtail species. The last two shots were at 4x magnification, where I used both flash and an additional light source for proper exposure with low noise levels. The next image is a super close-up of a poisonous caterpillar with massive urticating hairs. This following shot is of two rainbow ants facing each other and communicating via pheromones. Apparently they can pick up chemical cues via their antennae. The next two shots are of a cellar spider I stumbled upon in our house, and these are both handheld stack shots, with each consisting of several photos. I left six high magnification images last, that were all captured in my studio using a manual macro focusing rail. This is where the Laowa 25mm really excels, and where one can see tremendous amount of discernible detail on tiny little subjects. watching, I hope you find some useful pieces of information in this video. If you want to learn how to select the right shutter speed when using a flash, I highly recommend you check out this tutorial next. Also if you like to learn interesting facts about the subjects that you capture, this educational macro video might be up your alley. Thanks again and catch you very soon in the next one.